Nasal vestibulitis is an inflammatory condition that affects the nasal vestibule, which is the area just inside the nostrils. It is characterized by redness, swelling, pain, and sometimes the formation of crusts or sores. Understanding the anatomy and pathophysiology of the nasal vestibule is crucial in recognizing and managing this condition effectively. The nasal vestibule is the most anterior part of the nasal cavity and is lined with specialized skin called the nasal vestibular mucosa. It contains sebaceous glands, hair follicles, sweat glands, and numerous blood vessels. The presence of dense hair, known as vibrissae, helps to filter airborne particles and prevent them from entering further into the nasal cavity. The nasal vestibule also plays a role in humidification and warming of the inhaled air. Nasal vestibulitis is commonly caused by bacterial infection. It occurs when the protective barrier in the nasal vestibule is disrupted, allowing bacteria like Staphylococcus aureus to multiply and cause inflammation. This can happen due to trauma, surgery, nose blowing, or nose picking. Staphylococcus aureus is the most common bacteria associated with nasal vestibulitis. It is a gram-positive bacterium that colonizes the skin and mucous membranes, including the nasal vestibule, in some individuals. Other organisms, such as Streptococcus pyogenes and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, can also cause nasal vestibulitis, although less frequently. Staphylococcus aureus produces toxins that contribute to the inflammatory response observed in nasal vestibulitis. The clinical presentation of nasal vestibulitis can vary but typically includes symptoms such as redness, swelling, tenderness, and pain localized to the nasal vestibule. Patients may also experience crusting, discharge, and discomfort, especially during nose blowing or touching the affected area. It is essential to differentiate nasal vestibulitis from other conditions that present with similar symptoms, such as nasal furuncles, herpes simplex virus infection, or allergic reactions. To distinguish nasal vestibulitis from other similar conditions, careful examination of the nasal vestibule is essential. Nasal furuncles present as tender red nodules with central pustules, while herpes simplex virus infection manifests as small vesicles. Allergic reactions typically have bilateral nasal symptoms and a history of allergen exposure. Considering the patient's medical history and risk factors further assists in accurate diagnosis. While nasal vestibulitis is typically a self-limiting condition, complications can occur if left untreated or in cases of severe infection. These complications may include the spread of infection to adjacent structures, such as the nasal septum or sinuses, and the development of abscesses. In rare instances, the infection can lead to more serious conditions like cavernous sinus thrombosis or intracranial infections. Prompt recognition and appropriate management are crucial in preventing complications. In most cases, nasal vestibulitis can be managed conservatively with measures such as topical antibiotics, nasal hygiene, and warm compresses. However, if conservative management fails or if there are recurrent episodes, surgical intervention may be necessary. Surgical options include incision and drainage of abscesses, excision of affected tissue, and cauterization of blood vessels to help control bleeding and promote healing. Antibiotic therapy is a key component in the management of nasal vestibulitis. Topical antibiotics, such as mupirocin ointment, are commonly used as first-line treatment. These topical agents help to eradicate the bacteria colonizing the nasal vestibule and reduce inflammation. In cases of severe or recurrent infections, systemic antibiotics may be prescribed. The choice of antibiotic depends on the causative organism and its sensitivity to specific antibiotics. Nasal culture and sensitivity testing can be valuable in guiding antibiotic therapy for nasal vestibulitis. A swab sample taken from the affected area can be sent for laboratory analysis to identify the causative organism and determine its susceptibility to various antibiotics. This information allows for targeted antibiotic therapy, improving treatment outcomes and reducing the risk of antibiotic resistance. Nasal decolonization strategies aim to eliminate or reduce the burden of bacteria in the nasal vestibule to prevent recurrent episodes of nasal vestibulitis. Treatment options may include the use of antiseptic nasal sprays or washes, nasal irrigation with saline solutions, or the application of nasal ointments containing antimicrobial agents. These approaches help disrupt the colonization of bacteria and promote a healthier nasal environment. The immune response plays a significant role in the development and progression of nasal vestibulitis. When the nasal vestibule's protective barrier is breached, the body's immune system recognizes the presence of bacteria and initiates an inflammatory response. This results in the recruitment of immune cells, release of various mediators, and activation of immune pathways. Understanding the immunological aspects of nasal vestibulitis is crucial for developing targeted therapies and preventing recurrence. While most cases of nasal vestibulitis resolve with appropriate treatment, some individuals may experience recurrent or chronic episodes. 
Chronic nasal vestibulitis may necessitate long-term management strategies to control symptoms and prevent flares. These may include regular nasal hygiene practices, the use of prophylactic topical antibiotics, or further surgical intervention in select cases. An individualized approach, considering the underlying causes and patient's response to treatment, is essential in managing chronic nasal vestibulitis effectively. In conclusion, nasal vestibulitis is an inflammation in the front part of the nose that can be very uncomfortable. It is important for healthcare providers to recognize the signs and symptoms, diagnose correctly, and provide appropriate treatment to help patients recover and avoid complications. Ongoing research will help us better understand and manage this condition.